Hi, my name is Saskia and welcome to my channel. So today I thought I'd go back to the series that I started a few weeks ago called Classics For You. I didn't really do much with it after I launched it, which was kind of a bad thing to have done, I'm really sorry about that. I thought today that I would make another video for that series because in a few weeks time I'm going to be going to Italy for part of my course and I really want to do some vlogs there and I thought, you know, what's the point of doing a vlog without background history to that? So I'm going to do a few videos on the lead up to this trip about the Romans, who they are, where they're from, their history, stuff like that. Um, and today's video is going to be starting that off. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about kind of a quick timeline, I guess, of, of Roman history. And it's about 3,000 years, not going to lie, it's quite a long time, but don't worry, I'm not going to be like, this happens every single year. Like, I'm going to do it kind of like the key events, key moments, and then I'm going to do a few more videos focusing on specific periods of history in Rome. Without further ado, let's go! Who were the Romans? So in my previous video for this series, I stated that the Romans began in 753 BC, which is technically true, but there is a period of history before that which kind of is like the pre-bits to the Romans, kind of like the founding civilization before Rome, if you get what I'm meaning. So there's this guy called Aeneas, and he was in this war, the Trojan War. Um, some people might know it, some might not, don't worry, I'm going to do a whole video on the Trojan War as well. It was basically between this city called Troy and Greece, like literally all of Greece. And Aeneas escapes, and after many trials on the sea, um, he eventually lands in this country called Italy. He decides that he will settle there and his family will live there for the rest of their days. Woo! But it's kind of, he's kind of the precursor to Rome though, because his descendants are the founders of Rome, and they are Romulus and Remus. Who are these two twins, um, and they were abandoned at birth by their mother. And then this is kind of where history gets a bit weird. They were either found by a wolf or a prostitute. And the reason why it's a bit uncertain why is because in Latin, the word for prostitute and the word for wolf are quite similar. Um, so it's debatable whether it's a prostitute or a wolf. So I just wanted to say for reference, the two words I'm talking about here are lupus, which means wolf in Latin, and lupinar, which means brothel that comes from the word wolf. So yeah, just going back to the video now. But for the sake of mythology, we're going to go with the wolf. <laughs> and so the wolf took these two twins to a cave and raised them. And there was a whole prophecy that they were going to start this amazing city, and they ended up fighting each other. And Romulus eventually killed his brother Remus and founded his own city, Rome, which he like named after himself because why not? If you're starting a city, you might as well name it after yourself. And so after this, for about 250 years, there was a period of history where there were a lot of kings of Rome um, until about 509 BC, when you have the last king of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. And he basically had a son who was not too great, Sextus Tarquinius. And his son raped this woman, Lucretia. And after this horrible occurrence, Lucretia committed suicide. Before she did, she asked her family to get a vengeance for her. Um, and there was this man with a lot of power at the time called Brutus, and he decided to overthrow and expel the king and his family from Rome. And he succeeded and founded the Roman Republic. where it was more for the people and the people could rule themselves well it's a basic way to rule themselves a lot of the elite class were kind of in power at this time so it was more fair I guess you could say but debatable still um, but yeah they had a lot of different positions that were changed annually and actually there's a lot of a lot of the systems are very similar I tend to see it to like the UK government system obviously not exactly the same but I can go into that in a later video if you guys want. So during this time there were these wars called the Punic Wars um, and they were between Rome and this other massive power in the Mediterranean called Carthage. Carthage was mostly centred in North Africa and so they kind of battled for supremacy in this area, in this region. 
and it was during this time there were people, this, this man called Hannibal, which you've probably heard about, not Hannibal Lecter, he's not a cannibal. He invaded Italy and after many battles he was defeated and so was Carthage and Rome then raised Carthage to the ground because why not destroy an entire city if you can? But yeah, so that was kind of the Punic Wars. Again, I'm going to go into further detail with them because they're actually really interesting. And they lasted from 264 to 146 BC, which is insanely long. Um, so after that, you had a bit more of Republic time until about 50 BC ish, um, maybe a little bit earlier, when you have Julius Caesar. A lot of you probably heard Julius Caesar, there's a lot of TV shows of him, um, films. You also have like the Shakespeare play based on him and he basically thought that the power that the Republic awarded him wasn't enough and he kind of wanted more power. At the same time this other quite powerful politician called Pompey decided the same thing. So there was kind of a lot of civil war between them and eventually Caesar won when Pompey was murdered by the Pharaoh of Egypt who did it to basically gain favour with Caesar but it didn't really go too well. Um, Caesar ended up moving him from the throne and putting his sister Cleopatra on the throne. And then after that anyway, um, Caesar had pretty much sole power. But it didn't last too long, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, people basically thought he had too much power. So a group of senators who were part of the government they decided to assassinate him, um, along with some of his close friends who were actually involved, such as a man called Brutus, which is ironic considering the man who started the Republic was called Brutus as well. So it could potentially be the same family, don't hold me to that though, I, it's not entirely sure if he is. So after this assassination, Julius Caesar says, Julius Caesar says, okay, <laughs> after this his adopted son Octavian decided to avenge his father's death. His adoptive father was assassinated in 44 BC and after this he went around killing his assassinators. Um, and then he also had a time when he was defeating a lot of enemies against him. The final enemy I guess you could say that kind of stopped him from having sole power himself was Mark Antony. And there was a battle in 31 BC called the Battle of Actium and this is when Octavian defeated Antony and Cleopatra. Again, made famous by lots of films. Um, again, Shakespeare wrote a play based on them. So yeah, after this, it was either 31 BC after this battle, or 27 BC when Octavian was given the title Augustus, which he's later better known by anyway as the Emperor Augustus. Basically, that's when he started the Roman Empire. <laughs> so this empire would last for quite a long time. Um, it's, you can't, so there's kind of two different dates when it ends. So in my previous video I said it would end in about 476 AD. And this is true, but it's also that the Roman Empire was split into two parts during this 500 year period. And so there was the western side of the Roman Empire and the eastern side. And the western side ended in 476 AD. And the last emperor there was Romulus Augustus. And then the eastern side didn't end for a lot, a lot later, till about 1453 AD. And by that time it was called the Byzantine Empire, which you might have heard of. So, you know, it can be debatable whether it ended in 476 AD or 1453 AD, because a lot of change in that time period about whether you could say it was the Romans or not, you know. But yeah, so it, it's debatable the time when it ends. But during this time of empire, there were a lot of different emperors obviously because no one lives forever <laughs> um, and a lot of different families took over there's a lot of dynasties I'm going to do a later video on this because I think there's so much you can talk about with Imperial Rome and I think it would be really interesting so yeah there you have it that is kind of the shortened down version of 3,000 years of Roman history yay! <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video I'm going to do more videos being more specific to different times or different periods of this history because you know, you can't shove 3,000 years into 10 minutes. Um, well, I did, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna expand more on those time periods. They're really interesting. Um, if there's anything specific you want to learn about from that time period, do just put that in the comments below and then I can, you know, go into that for you guys. 
if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe and then you'll get more notifications of when I post new videos also if you hit the little bell button it will tell you when I've posted um, and also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you want more like this just so I know that you're enjoying it and then I can like tailor my content more to you guys yeah, I'll see you in a bit thank you bye